y'all i am michelle mazel welcome back to my channel so in today's video i am going to be kind of talking about reacting to a video where the there's african americans african american and um uh, two women from the African continent that are having a discussion. There's always a discussion going on between African Americans and people from the African continent or people from the Caribbean's rest Indies, um, because people are really trying to understand the, the dynamics of these two groups of people. And so they always have these panels where they have these conversations. A lot of times I watch them because I want to really see the perspectives of both but a lot of times when i watch these panels i do wish that there were like different perspectives within these panels it seemed like the same conversations kind of going around in circles it doesn't seem like there's a, really a solution to these conversations which is kind of where we should be where when you have these conversations you should leave getting a, a clear understanding of the both you know getting a clear understanding of both groups getting a clear understanding of why there is uh, a disagreement there why there is such a divide and then coming up with solutions for that division to be to be mended not just sit there and have a conversation about the differences but how can those differences then be meshed into a unified front which is where these conversations should be going so i'm going to be just sharing just little bits of pieces of the of the uh conversation i will link below where you can find the entire video so that you can watch it it was actually a very productive conversation as far as there were no you know yelling no disrespectfulness which a lot of times happens in these types of uh these situations but they were very uh, both were very respectful to each other they both they all listen to each other as well so i'm only going to touch on the most important ones that i feel like definitely needed to have a different perspective into the conversations so the the ones i'm going to be talking about is um there's always a difference between um the two when it comes to how each the stereotypical type of mentality and i i talked about this in another video that i uh, about a year ago um but there was something else that they had added to that conversation that i'm going to to speak about um the the whole notion of black immigrants and them just kind of coming over and not respecting african americans and thinking they're better and having this stereotypical mindset uh feeling like the african americans don't take care of the opportunities so those are some of the topics that i'm going to be talking about and reacting to and giving my two cents in because again this is a very informative conversation and in order for there to really be a unified between the two people there has to be these conversations but they're definitely the panel definitely needs to be adding different perspectives that will continue to add to these conversations so that solutions can be made all right so let's get into it americans yeah. often saying you know you don't know where you come you don't come from but they would never say that to a haitian or, or a jamaican or a trinidadian even though we all came from the same same slave ship yeah, it's just different stops different but for some reason black americans or african americans aren't looked at as a specific culture when jamaicans are or haitians mm -hmm. are whatever antique like all of them are looked at nobody questions their culture so and the fact that we always have to answer our culture or is being questioned by people that look like us you know what i mean is very disrespectful and especially when we have built a unique culture within america and i think unfortunately the media does a good job at portraying only the negative stereotypes it's just like when <laughs> we were growing yeah. up the, the stereotypes that we've seen of africans was the flies on the face i didn't mm -hmm. have this down the third so that's what we saw so of course we had a negative perception but you know we see as now 2025 2024 we still seen that narrative push that don't go to those black americans they ratchet they ghetto they don't got no culture which is just to me is very disrespectful and it is, it is a slap in the face like as somebody so, who's a black american let me ask you something what country in africa are you from I'm from America. That's what we're saying. Just what like a Jamaica. Just like a, no, no, no. Hold on. Just like somebody from Jamaica, they're not going to say what country in Africa they're from. Somebody in Haiti is not going to say what country from. They're going to say they're Haitian. Because they were closer from what is it called, the Triangle and Slave but Trade. But when they, when you ask them that question, mm -hmm. they're not going to have a definitive answer. That's because they're already in their own community of Caribbeans, the Haitians, Jamaica. They're all like in one bowl. Just but, as far. All right. So this is a a runaround that you hear a lot of times in these circles where they're talking about african americans and people from the african continent there's always this runaround with this whole 
African Americans don't know where they come from. What what African Americans mean by that? Well, let me let me first comment on her talking about the trans the transatlantic slave trade. She was trying to say the transatlantic slave trade. People tend to forget that the Caribbeans, the United States of America, South America, a little bit of Europe, all of those those places were involved in the transatlantic slave trade. So majority of the enslaved Africans, the, the you know, the, the majority of them that were enslaved and they were shipped into these different places, majority of them were shipped to the Caribbeans and shipped to Latin and shipped to South America. There were millions shipped to that part of the transatlantic slave trade of the transatlantic area. There were only thousands that were sent to the United States of America, which is the reason why African Americans are the minority and not the majority. When you go to these other countries where they would also be a part of that story, that transatlantic slave trade story, they are the majority there. So that's the reason why their culture is still intact and, and, and a lot of them, the language and all that stuff is kind of still intact because they are the majority versus African Americans where we are the minority. So when you hear African Americans say that they don't know where they come from, a lot of the ones that say that are saying that they want to know where their ancestors came from. They want to know the beginning of the story. They want to they want to go beyond just slavery. So if you know they want to know uh, where that story began. It doesn't take away the fact that they're American. That doesn't change. The identity doesn't change. The country that they're from doesn't change. However, there are some African Americans that want that story to be complete. And so when they say they don't know where they come from, they're, what they're saying is they don't know originally where they where their ancestors would have started from um you know when we when i when i look at my my husband who is able to trace his family history back to his 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 great grandfather to his great great grandfathers you know um to his great great grandparents he's able to know exactly where um his clan started from where they you know and how they migrated to where they are now he knows the history of that um me i know as far back as records will allow me to, to go back but i don't know where my ancestors would have came from and so there are some african americans who are in search of that type of connection i'm still american so when when you hear a a black person say that they are they are american that is the exact same thing as a haitian saying they're from haiti as a jamaican saying they're from jamaica they are speaking from the country that they're from and and but you know a lot of times with african americans that the emphasis is always on the black part we we kind of emphasize the black parts of the american when we are you know getting shirts made or getting mottos a lot of times it's the black that we emphasize it's not really the american part because america has not always looked at us as americans they've always looked at black americans african americans as the others and so the black part of of who we are is a lot stronger than the american part of who we are because that is what pretty much has been kind of stamped on us from the beginning and that is is what keeps that that thread and that um and that glue together is that is our skin color um and so that is what you're going to hear first however when there's a conversation going on African Americans, Black Americans, that should be this is the first thing that comes out of their mouth. Like, where are you from? Where I'm black. Okay, well, that's not a, that's not where you're from. That's 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 ethnicity. That's race. Um, that has nothing to do with where you're from. Um, so yes, America is is fine. They, they, born and raised in the United States of America. Born in Tennessee. Born in New York. Born in Georgia. Born in um, you know Pennsylvania. Wherever. Um, and so that's that's what African Americans are saying. They're not saying they don't know what they're from as far as they know they're American, but there are some African Americans that do want to trace beyond that 
and they want to know where their ancestors come from and that's where that whole that's where that came from the the thing is, what are the opportunities that you think that we're that we have over that's here? different right the, yeah, the, I don't know the what grants the loans the, what, the scholarships and that stuff. we're getting more than you guys. i don't yes. i don't understand what no i've never heard of anything Do, of are y'all seeing what's going on with the immigrants right now and how the benefits that they're receiving yeah, are y'all aware of the, this right now? The immigrants were here. Yeah, yeah the, all of these immigrants in, going into in, New, to like New York, New York and Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Heard about are you aware that? of the, the benefits that they're getting right now? The free aware. hotels and the free EBTs and all of that. Yeah, $500 a week. Before we get, before we get, before we get immigrants, what immigrants are you talking about? Because I, what are you talking about? The Mexican? Yeah, because that's what I see. I see it's like the Guatemalans. The Venezuelan, yeah. Like, we're, we're not talking about them right now. But the so we're talking about immigrants. Well, yeah, immigrants, but you, what you just said is that. Africans are getting more opportunities than African Americans. Africans, Caribbeans. Yes. How? We're not talking about the Venezuelans. What do you mean, how? So, how? how? Answer that question. America is giving people, immigrants from other countries, more opportunities that they would give a black man specifically. Okay, so this is always a topic that comes up as well as far as. Uh, this whole notion that African Americans are not taking care of the, are not taking advantage of the opportunities in the United States of America and black immigrants are and that's the reason why black immigrants are more successful than African Americans and so that in itself is going to create a division um, so this is what I have to say to that first uh, let's address the notion of the reason why African Americans were further behind okay so during the civil war of course um the, it was the south the north against the south the south of course wanted to continue on with with slavery and um the north did not uh and it is actually a lot more complicated than that but i'm not really going to get into that that was one of the issues um and and neither one of them really cared one way or another about slavery or slaves they really were out for their own economic gain um and and slaves kind of got kind of got tossed in the middle of that the foolery but it really never was about slavery it really never was about giving slavery any slaves any rights the slaves was literally on the least of the totem pole of this whole situation but like always they get thrown into this and then there they be so the american government uh promised african americans if they fought in the civil war against the south they will compensate them and what they were supposed to give them was 40 acres and a mule so you probably hear african americans say that all the time now there were a couple of families that got the 40 acres and a mule that i did read from the book stamped i think it was stamped um but most of them did not get that after the civil war um of course the south lost and they they were trying to of course um kind of punish the south for all of the stuff they was trying to do and one of the things that they were they were going to do was compensate they were first abolishing slavery that was one one thing and they were going to supposed to compensate the african americans for participating in this war they did not they reneged and then they gave all the rights that they were taking away from the south they gave it back to them and so the south pretty much punished African Americans for participating in that war. And so even though there was no more slavery, even though uh, slavery was abolished, it was just basically modern day slavery with the whole Jim Crow era, the redlining, oppressive situation, violence against them, all that type of thing was going on after there. I mean, they really, the only thing different were that they were not living on a plantation, but they still have people telling them what to do, telling them not to do, what not to do. Uh, they weren't able to go to certain places. The educational, you know, their education wasn't all that great. The school buildings weren't all that great. They were not able to purchase homes. They, you know, they weren't able to, to, to move forward because of them participating in the Civil War. So that's where the gap came is um, not having those opportunities to build that wealth. And then, of course, you did have a a, a a black community that was a rich black community that they pretty much burned it to the ground. So that's more generational wealth than that was gone. So those families had to start over again. Um, and so that's what African-Americans are meaning when they're talking about that gap. Whereas with black immigrants, when they come to the United States of America, they pretty much bypass all that. They don't have to worry about all that that happened before. That's pretty much done for. And so you're able to have all these opportunities that generations before didn't have. Okay, so 
that brings us to where the conversation should should go from here um i think the conversation within the black community and the conversation within these types of panels is to understand that as a community our focus should be to continue to move forward as much every generation's role and every generation's goal should be to move further than the generation before them so that we're not stuck in the same place um and a lot of times what happens is people some people on the black community want to keep using that gap as a reason why we can't move forward instead of teaching the next generation the importance of what needs to do to create this generational wealth within the community and that could be having a, a business that could be supporting hbcus that could be being you know getting involved politically that could be um going to school getting an education and um getting some of these very prominent jobs that you can bring back into the community like lawyers and doctors and all these things that you are able to create then your own kind of community so that it can it can move forward and so that's what we need to be teaching the next generation the importance of supporting black as much as possible and a lot of times that's not happening now i always tell my children and i've told my children my my daughter went to hbcu that is the one thing that a lot of african-american parents should be pushing to their children to support hbcus as much as possible um, but a lot of times what you see happening is that these pwis are are literally recruiting african-americans to play football to play basketball to play all these sports giving them these scholarships to do that and unfortunately the hbcus a lot of times are not able to compete with these pwis so these these athletes are not coming to these hbcus and bringing their talent to the hbcus that was the reason why that whole blow up thing happened with deon sanders because you know he invested in all this stuff and then all of a sudden oh sorry he goes to to a pwi um and so we we have these opportunities that could that all seem like they kind of come and go but as black people we have to continue to to foster that growth in our community so that we can start building that wealth and that's what needs to be happening in these communities pointed out any simple direct way you can know that black people are lazy but yet y'all can claim and give us that title you don't know you don't know that this is what chinese you people give y'all that title. no 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 American. africans as well a lot of foreign yes, people or immigrant people are, are, are doing it we're not going to cut the slack oh it's it's everybody doing that shit to black americans that is but true. do you know how hard it is no listen do you know how hard it is to leave your country, our home, Africa, wherever in Africa, mm -hmm. to now get a to even get a visa mm -hmm. in itself is hard. It's not. It's well, not. Why, why you know how hard it is, is to build cheap. America We're not talking for about free, that right now, though, for free, right and here. not to get anything. Because well, you're but, only speaking from but, an African but, perspective. But, but, but if it's so African hard, why do millions of America. people do yes, it <laughs> every day, every but, year, every but, week, I mean, every month? I don't want to negate from what you're trying to say. What is what is the shit that they get for school scholarships? Not not the scholarships, but they had and they took away the rights recently. Affirmative action. Affirmative action. Look, that's being spread between. That was just supposed to be for African Americans. Right. First of all, you definitely need to to know where these comments are coming from, because a lot of the comments that are coming uh, from black immigrants that are saying these negative things about African-Americans, you have to look at how old is that person? A lot of times it's a father, a grandfather that is born in a different time. It's the same thing for African Americans in our communities, in our homes. We were also told, and, and the, the guy did eventually say this later on in the conversation. We were also told very negative things about people from the African continent. Now, apart from think from saying that they were born, uh, you know, with no clothes on and flies on them and big bellies and uh, just with war around them uh you, we also was told at least in my household somewhat not in my household but family members that um 
that black immigrants if, if you were in a relationship with them they're only with you because they want a green card that they're thieves that they're liars that they're deceivers i mean these are the things that i was hearing sometimes from other family members and i know that there are some african americans who have also heard the same thing there are videos upon videos on social media where there's women basically saying that they don't want to have anything to do with a black immigrant a man from from you know that is outside the united states because they are thinking that every one of them are out for a green card or think that all of them is trying to scam them that's another one or think all of them are trying to to deceive them or trying to steal from them so those are the things that are happening in some of these african-american households that are about black immigrants. That's the conversation that need to be had. That's the acknowledgement that needs to be brought up in these conversations. Because a lot of times, it's almost like the black immigrants are the only ones that have this stereotypical mindset, when that's not true. We have stereotypical mindset, black people in the United States. It's time that we acknowledge that and start bringing that to the forefront. But a lot of times, people are very scared to speak on black people's shortcomings because you'll have some black people that will come up in there and say that you're anti-black that you don't are trying to empower your people because they don't like you speaking against each other i'm just saying there's a lot that i wish that i could unpack with this video but i just don't have time to but i definitely will link below so that you all can see the video in its entirety i am michelle mazel thank you all for watching make sure you like and subscribe and i will see you all in the next video Bye.